Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a client access server array for Exchange 2010. And this is a high availability solution for client access servers running on Exchange 2010. So we're going to begin by adding the Windows NLB feature to your Windows 2008 server machines. So clicking on the Features tab under Server Manager. We then go to Add Features and then we're going to select Network Load Balancing which is not installed by default. And then I'm going to click on Install. So the installation has completed and then, then we're going to click on close and NLB has been installed. If we go to all programs, administrative tools and then we'll see the network load balancer show up from where we can create network load balancing cluster which is a similar interface to your Windows 2003 NLB manager. So we, we install the same NLB manager feature on all servers that we would like to cluster. In my particular scenario I'm attempting to cluster three client access servers. So I will be installing the NLB manager on two other nodes. So I am installing NLB on the second server and I will also install NLB on the third server. So to create an NLB cluster is a simple process. You first have to decide on the CS array name that you're going to use. In my case I will be using the name CS array for the virtual cluster name. So I'm going to create a new cluster by right clicking and selecting new cluster. And then I'm going to connect to a host that is to be part of the cluster. So I'm going to connect to this same server exch new. I'm going to click on connect and next and accepting the defaults here and then we're going to add a cluster IP address which is shared by every member of the cluster for load balancing. So I'm going to select another setting here. I'm going to select an IP address to be used for the NLB cluster IP. I'm going to select 205. Then I'm going to click next. And then here is where we're going to enter the name that we spoke about previously. So I'm going to use csre. Dot the domain name and then I'm going to go to next I'm going to select multicast for the mode of operation and this is an important piece where you need to define port rules in my case for CS node balancing there are specific ports that you need to load balance and these are TCP port 135 and UDP TCP 6005 to 65535. But in my demo here, I'm going to accept the defaults to mean all ports. Then I'm going to click on finish. So we wait for the first node to be added before we add the others. And while this is taking place, I'm going to log on to a Windows XP box to show you what the configuration is presently for a Outlook 2010 user. So this is an Exchange 2010 user called Jeremy and if we go to his email account properties we will see that he is currently using the Exchange 2010 server called EXCH New and this is where it currently points to but for high availability you will want this to point to the name of the CSRE name that we created before that will be csre.dev-tt.com so 
I'm going to go back to the array. It's having problems connecting right now because of the NLB cluster that is being created at this point. So while the NLB cluster is being created, I'm going to create a new host record for our CS array name. Remember we call it CS array. And then the IP that we gave it, we're going to enter it here. In the DNS to IP. Where the IP is 205. So the host record has been created for the client access array name. And next, we're going to run a command in order to create the CS array object. And we do this in an exchange command shell, which is the following command. So we need to enter the site name. So this creates the client accessory object called csre1. So back to the NLB cluster, we see an error stating that it, the interface was misconfigured. This is because when the NLB cluster is created for the particular node, we need to also add under advanced TCP IP properties the IP address for the NLB cluster IP, which in this case is 205. click on add and then when we click on refresh this is what we want to see we want to see a status of converged so then we do the same thing for the other servers we go to add host the cluster and then we add the other host that is to be added to this cluster so the name of the other server is exch new 2 we click on connect then go next next defaults and wait so the second node has converged and then we do the same exact process for the third cluster for the third node in the cluster So from a machine, you would want to verify that the CS array has been set up correctly in DNS. So you're going to ping the array name, and so that you get a proper resolution. But one thing to note is that for the user Jeremy, his email exchange server still points to the, by server name, the name of the server, exchnew. But ideally, we would want this to point to the NLB array name, which is CS array. So to do that, there are some more settings that we need to configure from Exchange from the Exchange Management shell. So in Exchange 2010, we look for the properties for this particular user, and we will see that the database that Jeremy is using is the ACME database which is stored on the EXCH new server. So we need to set a property for this particular database to point to the CES array name. So you run the following command and we do this same follow the same procedure for all other databases that we would like to point to the new CES array object called CES array one.